child themes, the main topic of the day. So child theme is like a mirror of your of the theme you decide you decide to install on your WordPress. So let's say you want to go with let's say WordPress 2017 theme to install on your website. If you need to customize your website to look the way you want it to be, you need to install a, without losing your customizations once you update the parent theme. You need to install a child theme. A child theme one allows you to change some aspect of your of your site's appearance while preser pre preserving the look and functionality of your theme. So if your theme is for WooCommerce, for blogging, just create a child theme and then it will adopt the functionality of the parent theme. And then the customization you make, they won't go to the parent theme, they'll go to your, uh, to your child theme. So let's say you want to move your logo to the center, not to the left of your theme or you have to change the menu to be under the, the logo, something like that. You need to, to install a child theme and then do the customization because if you do the customization with your parent theme, the theme that you buy from someone or you install from the WordPress rep repository, once the editor of the theme decides to update the theme, you lose all the, all the customization you did. So it will go back to basics if you're done customizations. The second thing, if you want to develop a, a website, you have two options. Pick a template or design from scratch. A child team allows you to pick a template and then customize from there. So you can start from 50 or 60 percent or 70 percent and then customize your website to be the way you want it to be. And then if you're new to WordPress, let's say you want to build themes in the future, sell themes in the future. If you want to learn how themes work uh, or how websites are built in WordPress, the best way to start is by building a child theme. So you just get a template of a theme, install it, and then you install a child theme. And then from there, you can start customizing templates of how your, your homepage should look, should look like, your, word pre, uh, your blog page, your contact page, something like that. So when should you need a child theme? The moment you start asking yourself questions like this, I wish my site could look like this, like the logo should be on the right, not on the left like the widget should be on the right, not on the left, or just one column. The moment you open a page and you're like, ah, I don't like how it looks, you get a, a child theme. And then the moment you decide, you feel like, okay, I don't like where the comment section is or where the subscription button is, or something like that. And then finally, if you get a template and you're like, okay, it has a widget somewhere, and you don't feel like you need that widget thumb there. Or if you need a website that doesn't need any commenting or anything like that. So just get a child theme, you edit the, the coding, and then you remove the commenting section. So creating a child theme, you have two options. You can go the manual way, or you can use a plugin. And today we're going to, we're going to start with how to create a child theme manually. Like you just create a folder and the files and So creating a child theme manually, the first thing you need to do is create a folder. And then the folder, you'll need to name it. If let's say your parent theme is parent theme, or let's just say parent, and then you need to create a child theme. So you need to name the folder parent, and then you add child at the end. And then inside that folder, which will be in your WordPress themes folder, you create two files style.css which is mandatory to create a child theme and functions.php which is optional if you need to create some custom codes later. So let's say this is your parent theme. This will be your child theme and it should be in the same folder as where your parent theme is and then you just add the child and then you create these two, two folders, two, two files I mean. The style, the CSS file, needs to have some details for you to make it a child theme. The first thing is the name, and then the second theme is second thing is the template. The template tells WordPress that this is a child theme of a certain parent theme. So, if this is a child theme of 2014, will you will include the, the name of the, the template, the template name of the parent theme, which is 2014 which you, 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 you can find on your parent themes function or PHP or something or the style CSS. 
So if you just open your parenting style of CSS or function of PHP, you'll find this information. Function PHP, dot PHP. So this file, it has some, you can use it to customize the thing the way you want it. But the main functions when you're creating a child theme for function with PHP is enqueuing styles and scripts. So let's say when you create a child theme, it doesn't, it doesn't adopt the styling of the parent theme automatically. So the first thing you need to do is enqueue the, the style of the parent theme. And to do that, you have to, this is some code and we won't go into it, but the function you have to include is function my child in scripts, which this function picks the child, the styling file from the parent CSS and drops it on the child theme. So when someone's open your website, when you have the child theme activated, it will look exactly the same as the parent theme. And then second thing is, let's say you need to add a custom PHP script on your, on your website, something that wasn't in the parent theme, but you need to add to your theme. This is where you add your functionality. So whenever the editor of the parent theme decides to update their theme, they, you won't lose your customizations in any way. Yeah, I've talked about this. And then the second option is creating, uh, creating a child theme using a plugin. This is the safest and the easiest way. It will take you like 30 seconds if you have good internet. So the thing you need to do is go to plugins, add new, and then you search child theme configurator. This is the, my suggested plugin, the one I've been using all, all through, and it has been working fine. So you go to plugins, add new, and then search child theme configurator, and then you find the plugin with that picture. And then you click install, install now, and then activate. Once you activate it, you'll go to tools, yeah, I guess tools on your WordPress W admin page, and then child theme. Once you click on that, you love this kind of page. So you love the option of creating a new theme, a new child theme, configuring an existing child theme if you created one manually, and you need to enqueue the scripts, the styling and the scripts from the parent theme. You select the second option. If you want to duplicate a child theme, so you can customize it differently, you select the third option and then resetting an existing child theme so it goes back to basic like it will remove all the customization you've done to it so the first thing the second thing you need to go is to do is select a parent theme so the theme that you have currently on your website that you want to customize is the one you select here and then you analyze this plugins allows you uh, it will analyze the theme automatically so it will tell you if the theme will use Import at import and queuing script, or it will just it, it just enqueue the scripts automatically. So that the fourth thing is the name of the child theme. So you you enter the name the the one you need. Like you can customize the name of the child theme to whichever you need. But to be on the safe side, you need to add the child so that whenever anyone logs into your WordPress dashboard, they'll know this is a child theme for a certain theme. The pros of using a plugin, it, li it will automatically tell you the correct way to set up a child theme based on the parent theme configuration. So if you're doing it manually, you'll have to go step by step by step by step. So if a theme, let's say, doesn't support enqueuing a script or a style, you'll have to use the import function, so which is too much work, I, I can say. And then it will find the exact style selectors. Like if you need, if you don't know where to find the parent theme name, to include in your to inc the parent theme template name to include your child theme when you're doing it manually. Just go with the, uh, with the child, child theme configuration plugin. It will select that automatically. And then let's say you have a website, you've been working on it for like, say, let's say the last one year, and you've been using the parent theme. And you're like, okay, I need to customize some things. And you've already customized some things on your parent website. Like you've changed the location of the logo, the widgets, and something like that. So if you use a plugin, it will automatically copy your customization from the parent theme and put it on your child theme. So you won't have to start from zero again once you install the child theme. 
and then automatically increase the starch is there. Uh, installing and activating a child team. I guess once you've opened a child team, uh, our WordPress website, you know how to install a team. If you don't, you just go to appearance and then themes. And then up there is a button to upload your new theme, something like that. And then once you've created your theme, if you've created it manually and on your desktop, not on your or on your website backend, you need to upload it to your WordPress installation. But if you use a plugin, once you go to appearance of the theme, you'll find it automatically created. So you see this is the parent theme, and then this is the child. So just go to activate the child theme, and then maybe if you need to, look to see how your theme will look like before activating it, you can just click live preview. It will show you how a theme will look like once you activate the child theme. Another function or the benefit of having a child theme is editing and overriding parent themes templates. So templates are files which determines how your homepage will look like, your blog post will look like, your comment section will look like. So every theme has this kind of file. So in every, like in this, let's say this is a, a folder of a theme. Index PHP will decide how you homepage, when someone logs into your website, this is how they'll see it. The header is where your menu and your logo will be and how they look like. And then the page, page.php decides, determines how any page you create on your web WordPress files, on your WordPress website will look like. So let's say you have a problem with, a, let's say a page on your, on your WordPress installation and you're like, ah, I need to change this page to be, let's say, two columns or three columns, something like that. You need to copy this file page from the parent theme, and then you copy it to your child theme. So you just copy it from directly from the parent theme and then to the child theme folder. Once you do that, any customization you make on that file will automatically reflect on your website. And once a parent theme is updated, you won't lose the customization, customization you did in your template file. And else, let's say your team doesn't have a, a template file for a page you need. Let's say you need your About Us page to look differently from any other page, or your 404 page to look differently, or your homepage to look differently. So the first thing you go is create a page, and then you add in the front, let's say, page that for for 404 or page dot slash homepage, and then you customize it the way you need. So if your homepage looks a certain way when you start, it has like one column, and you need it to have like three columns, one for widgets and searching, the main content, and then some other things on the other column. You create your file on your child theme folder, and then once you open your page, WordPress will automatically pick the page, depending on how you named it. So if there are some customization you need to, to do on your naming for WordPress to pick it automatically. Key pointers. Parent team is still master. Once you create a child team, it doesn't make it like the master team. What child team does is just copying what parent team is doing. So any changes made to the parent team will somehow affect the child team. So if you need to be if you need to be on the safe side, make sure every time a child theme, a parent theme is updated, you compare it with your child theme. So that if there's any functionality included on your child theme and then it's updated on the parent theme, you need to edit it. That's the second point actually. So in queuing and reference any new files and scripts. So you've installed a child theme, you've created everything, and then you need to add some template files on your child theme. WordPress won't automatically pick it and then display it on the front end. You need to somehow tell WordPress that this is my child theme, these are my custom functions or templates. You need to copy it from, the, on the, from my child theme and then display it on my website. Same point, I made it on the first one. And then, do you need a child theme? So let's say you have a theme 
like that you like 90 percent and then you have like 10 percent of it you don't like some aspects of it you can get a child thing but let's say you get a template you like 30 percent of it 70 percent of it you don't like so there's no need of creating a child theme to make customization of 80 percent of your website it's better for you to just create a theme a parent theme and then do the do the customization the way you like it the same point the last one and that's it for me <laughs>